This is huge, and Roleplay Roulette had no real room in our actual review to impress that. And while that's fine if you, loyal viewer, already are familiar with riffs, if you're just learning about riffs through us, then we haven't done our job, and I'm not cool with that. Riffs is a Brobdingnagian world with more factions and diversity than an Indian parliament. It's also more prone to fistfights and probably more colorful, but India might have them beat on that last one. I think the metaphor is getting a little layered, so let me just get back on track. The point I was trying to make is that Riffs is big. It's bigger than a pro-choice rally in Texas. It's bigger than a televangelist's smile. It's bigger than June Shannon's ass. So I'm gonna fire up the burners on the old hot air balloon and take you all on a magical journey through the Palladium Megaverse. This is the Top 10 Supplements for Riffs. While more of an alternate setting for the Rift's world itself, Chaos Earth is a great buy and an awesome game. Chaos Earth takes place just after the Great Cataclysm, when humanity was still struggling to survive in a world gone <laughs> house. If you're interested in seeing the world of Rifts in its birth throes, or learning what really happened during the mysterious period that in modern setting is lost, then Chaos Earth is goodbye. It offers a lot of material that can be used elsewhere, but it is kind of niche, being more intended to be run as its own setting than anything else. Okay, now I know this is cheating harder than an ID law in a gerrymandered voting district, but the Rifts Mega Sourcebook series cannot be listed separately. And it has to be listed, because it's simply one of the coolest support ideas that I've ever seen. Neither really contributes to the setting in any way, which is what I really look for and what makes a great supplement. But what they lack in fluff, they make up in pure convenience. The Game Master Guide compiles 10 years worth of skills, equipment, fighting styles, and other associated pieces of information that makes Rift's character creation and running the game much quicker and easier. The Book of Magic compiles every spell up to the point that it was printed. It's hundreds of pages of easily found magics. I I think this is a good pick for number 9, and I recommend it wholeheartedly for storytellers and players alike. I've got two words for you. Cyber boobies. Okay, I guess that does require some context. The Rift's Bionics Handbook greatly expands the options and character creation for the Cyborg, the Cyberdoc, and the Cyber Knight. It also introduces dozens of new cybernetic options and better explains the technology for characters who just need a new arm or want cosmetics. The detail is pretty incredible, and you really get a feel for the thought process of the bionic and cyber doc industry. Cyber boobies. You can get cyber boobies. It's a book that I simply would not be without, and it doesn't just work for riffs. It can work in any high-tech or futuristic setting, like Ninjas and Super Spies, After the Bomb, System Shock, or Heroes Unlimited. Now we mentioned crazies in the main review, but you only got to see the regular kind. This book opens up options for the class faster than a college freshman who just figured out that anonymity exists. Mineworks deals with the scavenge facilities that created the crazy enhancement surgery before the cataclysm, and gives us some, but not enough, insight into modern France. It introduces the Mega Crazy, which is awesome, and expands the process, explains its function, and adds new options. It's a great book because the class doesn't get much treatment anywhere else. I would like to see an updated version of it in the future, but for now, it's comfortable occupying my number 7 spot. Say, do you love the Coalition of Man, but hate Psyhounds and disagree with their stance on bionic augmentation? Then Quebec is the place for you. In the Rift setting, Quebec finally has her independence, having formerly been a Coalition satellite state, but since breaking off for ideological differences. The book details a great deal of the far reaches of North America and goes well with Rifts Canada and the Zydekix invasion. Oh, and Glitter Boys. Glitter Boys galore. Glitter Boys everywhere. This book has more Glitter Boys than a Miami Pride Parade. If you like the Glitter Boy pilot OCC, then get Free Quebec. They're the reason the Coalition developed the Glitter Boy Killer. A brief read will let you know why. When you look at Rifts, you often see pictures of giant fighting robots shooting other giant fighting robots in the giant robot shooting fighting skies. That makes me wonder why it has taken us this long to make it to Japan. Rifts Japan is one of the only supplements in the game to deal with the Far East Asia. It has all the earmarks of Japanese culture that Americans tend to be semi-informed about. Ninjas, giant robots, hot chick assassins with cybernetic boobs. Wait, I might be thinking about every Japanese cartoon I've ever seen. Speaking of, Rifts Japan! It's actually a really good source book with some really interesting new equipment, mystic traditions, and ninjas. And I can't lie, I love ninjas! Real ninjas, fake ninjas, fantasy ninjas, mystic ninjas, cybernetic ninjas, ninjas and super spies, Jubei-chan, the ninja girl, whatever you've got, I'll take it. 
As long as it's not Yuffie or Naruto. This might sound like another cheater category, but Triax and the New German Republic are in the same book. Like, that's its name, Triax and the NGR. Another great book for cyborgs, this one stands out to me mostly because of this detailing of the middle reaches of Europe and what has become of the Germanic regions. It has a lot of great world information and a great deal of information about Triax, the continental megacorporation. Add that together with warring factions of demons and you have one of my favorite books in the series. Now we're getting into my favoritest of the favorite books in the series, so forgive me if I gush a little bit, but this book is f***ing awesome. Riffs England details the entirety of the British Isles after the Cataclysm. While it's unlikely that most of it would be there after the sea levels rose, thank you very much Lost Continent of Atlantis, it's still one of my favorite settings. I mean, it's high fantasy medieval England. The countryside is rife with fairies, a group of supernatural creatures that have created a new government mimicking the court of King Arthur, and a new creature called the Millennium Tree that has taken root, giving rise to entire new mystical disciplines. While I do find the court of King Arthur and his Magitek rune sword Caliber X a tad silly, this is still the closest Rifts gets to high fantasy. It's one of the most mystical settings in the entire game, and I just absolutely love it. Remember when I said Quebec was the place to go if you don't like Psyhounds? Well, Texas is the place to go if you do like them. Lone Star is a city-state that rose up around the buried laboratory from a golden age. The Coalition discovered it and retro-engineered the technology, then refurbished the facility and began to exploring the secrets of genetic engineering. Lone Star is both a great setting book detailing a large section of Southern America and North Mexico, while also introducing scads of new information and options for my favorite racial character class, the Dog Boy. Combine that with expanded information on other genetic experiments like the Psyx aliens, and I'm sold. Riff's Lone Star is a must-have. Okay, are you ready to hear about my favorite riff supplement of all time? Madhaven deals with what is left of Manhattan. It is a broken landscape of mutated monsters and terrifying brain-shattering horrors. You see, when the ley lines first exploded, Manhattan and the greater New York City area was the most populated part of the Western world. It also had five major nexus points that all exploded at once, killing nearly a billion people simultaneously. The combined eruption of fear, hate, and confusion acted like a psychic nuke and damaged not only the landscape, but the very essence of the world. The result is what is called the Psychic Scar, a sprawling ghost land that attacks people's minds and drives people mad. The remains of the city is also populated by what was left of New Yorkers who survived and couldn't escape. The populace are so mutated from released pollutants and adapting to the Scar that they're no longer recognizable as humans, if they are still human at all. So I guess more like New Jersey if you think about it? Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this list helpful and that you'll give Riffs a shot if you haven't already. Please follow the link to see our main Riffs review, a video explaining combat, a video explaining character creation, and more game reviews. You can also check out my page for more of my top 10 lists. Until next time, this has been Winter Wrap-Ups Roleplay Roulette Crossover Edition. <laughs>